very hot welcome, well it's hot anyway, to the Faculty of Humanities and Education. We're delighted that you have joined us and we're going to teach you and help you as best we possibly can over the next three or four years of your career here. I'm Evelyn O'Callaghan, I'm the Dean of the Faculty. I think I have to show you who I am, but that's, well, you can't see anything anyway, it's too dark. It's, it's, it's right, never mind, too bright. Um, and my field is literatures in English, Caribbean literature, but that doesn't mean that I don't take a passionate interest in all of you. So I want to say first and foremost, the Dean's office and the faculty office is the heart of this faculty. So any problems you have, any questions you need answers to, if you have reached a dead end with your lecture or your head of department and you need further help, come to the faculty office. It's a warm, welcoming place, and I'm nothing to be frightened of. Okay. I have an address to give you, but I'm going to wait a little bit and get through some housekeeping first. So that's just to get you interested. Because you're all very intelligent and, and educated humanities and education students, you probably don't watch TV, right? And you have never heard of some stupid show called Game of Thrones, right? No? Seriously? All right, well, the principal is a great fan, so you better, you better get with it. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about Game of Thrones and what that has to do with the Faculty of Humanities and Education in just a short while. First, I just want to introduce you, I, I hope you can see something of the faces of the officers of the faculty. And I'm going to ask them when I finish the introduction, virtually, I'm going to ask the heads to come on stage and give you a little talk about the various disciplines that are within their departments. So first of all, we have Professor Frederick Ocheng Odiambo, and he is sitting right there, and he's the Deputy Dean for planning, which means he has responsibility for planning, but also for all matters to do with graduate affairs. In the middle, beside him, but not here yet, is Professor Kerwin Best, and he's Deputy Dean Outreach. So he'll be the person handling things like research day, open day, school visits, what it says, outreach. Right over there in the corner is Mr. Harclyde Walcott, and he's the Deputy Dean of the EBCCI, which is the Errol Barrow Center for Creative Imagination. So it's where the creative arts happen, right across the road. We have Professor Joel Warrican, who will speak to you shortly. He's the new director of the School of Education. Again, Mr. Harclyde Walcott, who is the director of the Errol Barrow Center for Creative Imagination. We don't have the principal of Codrington here, but we have Canon Kirkley Sands, from Codrington College, so any of you registered for theology, that is he. In the front row, Dr. Henderson Carter, who's head Department of History and Philosophy, and the missing one who is on his way is Dr. Ian Craig, Department of Language, Linguistics and Literature. I want to tell you a couple of things that you need to know first, and this is to do with the disability policy. We really want to emphasize that any students who have any challenges whatsoever are able to enjoy the same level of success as all of their fellow students without any fear of disadvantage or embarrassment or discrimination. So contact the Office of Student Services who will draft an accommodations plan based on your articulated needs. Anything at all you have, hearing, sight, movement, any kind of issues at all, contact student services. Here's the courses that we offer, which the heads will talk about in a little more detail. The Bachelor of Fine Arts, that's in the creative arts, dance, drama, theater, film, etc., and music. The Bachelor of Education, two streams, education and early childhood care and education. The Bachelor of Arts, French, history, linguistics, literatures in English, philosophy, psychology, theology, Spanish, all in the Bachelor of Arts. And we have lots of minors, including two new ones this year. Basically, you add a minor, if you want to, to your major, 
your major being your chief area of study from one of the following areas, but you can't do this until you've completed one academic year. So think about adding to your major African studies, biomedicine, Brazilian studies, Chinese, communication studies, creative writing, cultural studies, ethics and society, and all of the rest on offer there. You also can select from other faculties, and these are quite popular, but you do need to get permission from the faculty that you are doing, that there is still room in their minor. Law, biology, chemistry, computer science, IT, mathematics, and in social sciences, accounting, economics, management, a lot of people do a language with management, public sector management, and the rest on that list. I think you'll be able to understand this if you just think that every semester you need to earn 30 credits. And 30 credits works out as 10 courses per semester. That's if you're full-time. If you're part-time, you have the list. 30, 30, 30, 10, 10, 10 if you're full-time. 90 credits makes up your degree. Level one, you do the courses required for the major, and I have to ask you to look at the faculty handbook. It's available online, you need to download it, and you really need to spend a little time looking at your area of study, your degree. You do two foundation courses, you do all of the ones that are compulsory for your major, you do two faculty electives, which includes the foreign language requirement, and then you do whatever you want to make up the rest of your credits, 30 credits or 10 courses. Once you've done level one, you move on to level two, you do the same thing. Your full-time registration, if the letter that you got admitting you says so, three-year program, you shouldn't be in full-time employment. If you are, it's a good idea to go part-time because it's hard to cope with both full-time studies and a full-time job. 10 courses a, a year, five per semester. Part-time, your letter of introduction says that you are accepted into the four-year program. You register for five courses each year, three in the first semester, two in the second, or two in the first, three in the second. If you're doing well, you get permission from me and you can do six courses to fast track. Remember, there's also summer courses that you can make up your degree um, uh, requirements. If you have an A-level or CAPE pass, you can register for six courses without any kind of permission. And you can register full-time after you complete at least 24 credits. Foundation courses. The coordinator is not here yet, but hopefully will be coming, so I will let her speak when my time comes. But you have to do in this faculty two foundation language courses. Everyone does exposition for academic purposes, and then you get to choose one of the others. Introduction to argument, introduction to creative nonfiction, or for the people doing French and Spanish with management or psychology majors, an introduction to professional writing. So you have to do these two language courses. Everyone has to do it, but students who have one, no, this is complicated for me. Right, you do the foundation language course if you have a pass in the English language proficiency test, if you have CSEC grade one, English A, if you have CSEC grade one in, not CSEC, grade one in O-level English language, if you've grade A or B, for in the alternative ordinary general paper, that's AO, if you have a grade one or two CAPE communication studies, and if you have grade B or higher in the BCC course, core 100 English and communication. If you don't have one of these and you didn't pass or didn't take the English language proficiency test, you have to do foundation 1000, fundamentals of written English, before you register for any of the level one foundation courses. 
students have to take one of the following beginner's language courses in order to satisfy the faculty's foreign language requirement. Beginner's French, beginner's Portuguese, beginner's Spanish, or beginner's Chinese. But if you have a CSEC grade one, two, or three in a foreign language, you're exempted from that requirement, and you can take any other level one humanities course outside your major. You then take two level, sorry, you take two level one faculty electives, that is any two courses offered in this faculty, but outside of your major. If you don't have the foreign language, obviously the foreign language should be one of those. And yes, if you're confused, I am too, so don't worry about it. You have advisors, and after you leave here, you'll be going for counseling, and they will help you in selecting your courses. The handbook, I cannot stress how important that is to have it as your Bible, but this is the thing that is going to save all of our lives, the registration aid. In my office, the very talented team has put together an excellent aid to registration. And every single major and minor combination has one of these templates. And all you do is you look on the left and you see what are the things you have to register for. And then on the right, you put in what you're actually doing where there's a choice. So let that be your absolute, absolute guide and, and record of your academic career when you are registering. Follow the registration aid. It's a useful and really easy to follow device. Co-curricular credits. You can do two of these which count towards your degree. If you want to do debating, drama, HIV, AIDS response, leadership service, student entrepreneurial empowerment, photography, sport, alcohol, drug abuse, basic peer helping, contact the student services office and they will tell you how to go about registering for these co-curricular credits. You can do two towards your degree. The Office of Student Services is there to offer you help in loads and loads of ways, from sorting out your study plan, to Creative Minds Project, to volunteer opportunities. Drop in and see what they have to offer. There's also a variety of clubs on campus providing the opportunity to build friendships and to contribute to your personal growth and development. There's the Language Club for French and Spanish students, the Cave Hill Theatre Workshop if you want to do some acting or directing, the History Society, and lots of others. At the Guild of Students, you will find all the information you need. Now, I want to tell you all that you have to go for counseling after this session, okay? Before you register, you have to have an academic advisor give you some tips as to what you need to do. Then you fill in your registration form using your aid and you're good to go. Welcome to the Faculty of Humanities and Education and have a great year. I talked about Game of Thrones, not because I like it. In fact, I've never watched more than half an episode in my life, but other people I gather do. But I know how important and how popular fantasy is now. And I'm using this because a lot of you will know the, will know the show, and I'm using it as a way of showing you or, or trying to convince you of some of the skills that you can learn right here in our faculty. Because Game of Thrones could have been made by our staff and students, and I'm not kidding. Every skill that you need to make a popular money-making best-selling television program or series or movie you acquire right here in the Faculty of Humanities and Education. First of all, you want to produce an exciting series for TV, a fantasy in this case. What is the first thing you need? What's the first thing you need if you want to? Which? Characters, an idea, a story, plot. Somebody said it, plot. You need the plot. And where do you get plots? From other stories, right? From books, from literature, from poems, from plays. In literature and history, and history, 
That's where we find the stories that we use to make new stories, to put our own spin on them. And indeed, the plot of that particular series borrows heavily from fiction. For instance, Cretien de Troy, who wrote some of the first romances, the ones of King Arthur and his knights, some 850 years ago, complete with giants, battles, magic, much swordplay. Sound familiar? And historical figures like Joan of Arc, and the semi-fictional, semi-historical Cleopatra, on whom I think these two ladies are the model for the character of Deaneries. And then there's Tyrion, who shares a lot with the historical King Richard III. Both were mocked for their looks. Tyrion is a dwarf, and Richard had a curved spine, and both of them were very unpopular, but also feared and accused of killing their nephews. Indeed, as one article put it, the show echoes and adapts the history and culture of the medieval world, but it ramps it up. So you need ornate armor for the Lannister army, which echoes Japanese samurai warriors rather than the very plain, boring European stuff. Drawing on the work of George Martin, such high concept fantasy is mega successful, but in addition to the historical and the literary research to get your plot, your story, and your characters, you need to put your own spin on it. You need to have a creative twist. So you need some training in creative writing. This will let you reweave history and traditional literature without liabilities and without the boring stuff, and even create a Caribbean setting if you want. So you have your story, but you need to account for the language they speak, because they can't talk just plain old Bayesian. They have to speak something that sounds weird and, and futuristic. Um, and how do you find that language? Well, you turn to the background of modern languages and linguistics. Linguistics, the study of how language works. And you base your fictional language on the rules of new and spoken languages. So if an episode gets you in as Bayesians say, blue vex, or Jamaicans would say ratted, you can discover where such words came from. That's etymology and lexicography, which you heard about, branches of linguistics. And guess what? Your literature training also shows you that Shakespeare uses the same or similar terms. And also, of course, the plots of evil knights and kings and magicians and battle in his plays. So you have lots to draw upon. But when you think, why did that episode make me vex? And as Canon um, Sands said, and why? You need to turn to psychology to explain. And if you want to get advertisers to sponsor your series and make some money, you need to know what applies, sorry, what appeals to which audiences and ensure you cater to their likes and dislikes. So you need some psychological profiles of your viewers. And of course, when we consider the ethics of some of the stuff that goes on screen, you need to think really carefully about the morality or the amorality of the worldview which it embodies. And so you turn to philosophy and to theology. You'll need to do research into all of these disciplines to find the answers. And research is the core, as Dr. Carter said, the core of the disciplines in the humanities. All of our majors, have research methodology mod modules, and that sets us way ahead of other faculties when it comes to self-driven research. You need actors, so you have to know a bit about theater arts and how drama and film work. And you need to play a part when you are confidently pitching your show to CBC or Hollywood, so you could probably do with some of that training in public speaking, role play, communication studies, and again, drama. You can get some hands-on experience, performing or directing by joining the Cave Hill Theatre Workshop or doing one of the programs offered in the creative arts. And then, of course, someone has to plan out how all the bodies, all the actors are to be arranged when the big battle scenes or a love scene or a dance are, are being staged. And that's called choreography. And choreography, as you know, is key to dance training, which is also an essential part of the creative arts. And to plan your choreography, it's important to have an idea what dance and movement means in a specific culture. It's symbolizing some kind of pre-battle ritual or some kind of spiritual celebration. Turn to cultural studies to find out. What kinds of religious system might these people believe in might have influenced our own cultural practice of spirituality 
As Canon told you, theology will answer your questions. We offer all the creative, analytical, and communication skills that you need to do whatever job you end up doing. We have graduates who are lawyers. We have graduates who are actors and burgeoning filmmakers. We have accidents accidents. We have, we, have, we have students who are, we have graduates who are Rhodes Scholars pursuing postgraduate research. We have graduates who are advertisers, video game designers, writers, journalists, media voices, pop stars, poets, managers, and prime ministers. And I actually have living proof example of all of these categories. So I'm not exaggerating when I say that the humanities trains you for lifelong learning. You're not in the loser faculty, as Thatcher said. You're in the faculty of humanities and education where ex exciting ideas get started. So throw yourselves in at the deep end, try as much as you can, enjoy and remember any problems, we are there. I'll tell you now where to go for your various registration options, remembering the prizes um, at the end of the, the year. Right, Exchange Students and Theology, TSR 10. Where's TSR? <laughs> Up in Sajikor? Right, okay. You have an app anyway, the, the UE app. TSR 11. Registry Admissions Office and the IT Service Desk. TSR 12, the Administrative Office. LR 13 is for French, Spanish, Linguistics, Literatures in English, and the representative of the Academic Literacies Program. And LR 14, Education, Psychology, History, Philosophy, the BFA Creative Arts, and the representative for the academic literacy program. That's your foundation language courses that you need to register for. Academic advising for new graduates will be on this evening. None of you are new postgraduates, so I don't think you need to worry about that. Go forth, register, multiply, and graduate in three years. I hope you have a really great time, and welcome to the faculty. Thanks.